supposed to be talking about today? I wrote fertility. We already did like two minutes on it, but then my brother said one of his friends had a question about fertility and I was like, oh, you know what? I really need to make a whole 30 minute thing because so many people ask me and I was like, I just need to go through this one at a time, like at the beginning. Why are people not fertile? Is there any procedure you do to them that helps with their fertility? Like when you adjust them and then that cures everything or makes everything, they get pregnant immediately or what? I will say, actually, it's funny. I just was having lunch with some girls. And we were talking a little bit about this, but you know, I think well, the nutrition thing I think is extremely crucial. Um, I definitely think there is a nerve portion to it, right? So if there is some kind of interference in the nervous system in some way, that could be a factor. Now, have I ever just adjusted somebody and that was the answer? I, you know, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I can't. I have no way to. Um, give you a straight answer on that right I don't think that would have been the only thing but um it is a possibility right anything is possible but I definitely definitely think there's a huge correlation with the mindset and um past stuff right so you know thinking about some of that stuff I think is is probably very very important you know just that whole belief system around can I get pregnant can I not you know the the challenge with the world saying that once you hit a certain age it's not possible or it's very impossible or very difficult um or you know if they'd had a prior miscarriage you know that that constant yeah they become very fearful right they become fearful now Mm -hmm. which diet do you put them on like what's your favorite diet well, I wouldn't say I put them on a diet per se. I would say the you know purification program is phenomenal. Put them on just a really phenomenal, like a, I say a detox. It's not necessarily a detox, but it, I guess it is a detox process, right? But it's really just cleaning them up, right, and getting their body um, eating clean, getting all the nutrients that they need. So um, my favorite standard process. That's always been my favorite. I've gotten such great results with that one. Now, there's so many other brands that have great detoxes, but. Yeah, because Young Living has like that Juva cleanse, like that liver Mm -hmm. detox. So I'm, but I've never, and I have gotten somebody pregnant with Young Living oils, but I think that she was stressed. And I think just a lot of the oils are so good for cortisol stress relief that I think that helped her a lot. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, I think. I think once you really get somebody, you know, on the right track with nutrition, I think it's definitely possible. I mean, so, I don't know. No, but you don't, like, I put people on the Mediterranean diet because there was actually a study that said that people, like, undergoing fertility treatments, if they were on the, the Mediterranean diet, they had a mm-hmm. lot higher likelihood of achieving pregnancy. So I will tell people kind of, like, give them some sort of a, achievable goal if you just say eat right no you know that's a lot of different things but if you say follow the mediterranean diet or you know if you can get guide them to a particular book where they can kind of start managing it i definitely think that giving up gluten or reducing gluten and dairy have a lot to do with just inflammation in the body and getting pregnant you know so i think that sometimes i'll just give them that like why don't you look for some some of your snacks that might have gluten maybe go look for something else like, yeah, anything to decrease inflammation, I think would be really important. Um, you know, because when your body's trying to focus on healing, it's not going to be focused on reproducing. Correct. Right? Mm-hmm. So that's the other thing I think that is always really important. Um, yep. So yeah, I could see the Mediterranean being pretty powerful. I mean, that, that definitely could work because you're getting them off, you know, the inflammatory types of foods, gluten, dairy, yeah. those they're always, they always tend to be inflammatory. I don't exactly. know. I was having allergies. <laughs> it's like, why do I do that to myself? Yeah, I do. I do. do now, do you do food? I do food allergy testing in people who are trying to get pregnant if they come to me, you know, early enough. Because I think that, you know, I can tell them to stop eating gluten and I can tell them to reduce milk. But I think frequently if I find out, oh, look, you have a nightshade issue, all the tomatoes and onions and these aren't good for you. You know, if I, the more I find out about what bothers their body, the easier it is to kind of alter their eating experience. And it might free up enough inflammatory factors where they'll be able to get pregnant again. 
Yeah, no, I absolutely. I think you probably have people that are specifically coming to you for that, though. I don't really have that. I have more people coming to me that just mention it. Mm -hmm. And then I mention, you know, and I let them know what's possible with nutrition, you know, and mention about the methyl methylation yep. factors. And because that one's such a big one that it's still, even though to me it's common knowledge, it's such a big missing with so many doctors that are doing, you know, fertility with people. It doesn't, it's, it kind of, just, yeah. I don't know. I, I think it's common knowledge, but then I forget that a lot of, uh, doctors aren't trained in nutrition at all right so oh yeah none of us are. well I mean I trained myself but I was not trained by medical school or residency right. at all and then an MTHFR is something even when I started ch testing it before everyone else did and I would send people to like the maternal fetal medicine doctor to for a consult they'd be like why are you sending them here what am I supposed to do and I'm like well, they have a higher chance of, you know, they're going to read that they have a higher chance of reproductive issues or issues with the baby. And it's good for you to check and reassure them that they don't. And but it was hard. I had to find one that really could have some sort of three sentence conversation with the patient so they'd feel better. <laughs> because some of the ones who are like, what's going on? I don't know. And I was like, well, that's not going to be very, very reassuring. This is important. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, I mean, all those things are so, so important. And I think, um, you know, and I think too, and I'm just glad that you put yourself through all that extra learning because it, it is so frustrating. I have to say when I've got patients coming in and their, their doctor, you know, their primary care, whoever has told them to stop taking certain nutrients because of yes. it's mostly the fear of the unknown. And that's what I, that's the thing that I, I believe. It's like, well, I don't know enough about it. So I'm just going to tell you to stop taking it. I know. Um, yeah. And I think it's really frustrating because, uh, you know, it's like we're just a, we've got a few steps forward and then all of a sudden a few steps back because uh, they stopped taking nutrients, which doesn't help you get pregnant if you're missing like even something like selenium. Like I'll ask people, do you eat nuts? Oh, I hate nuts. I'm allergic to them. I'm like, you're missing a very important you know, that's a big dietary source of selenium and that could have an impact on your fertility or zinc is something that's, you know, in nuts. And I'm like, if you're, so I kind of question them, like what is missing from your diet that maybe we can replace because that can only help you. Uh, people say, oh, I'm low carb and I do keto. Well, you haven't had bread in a while. That means you have no folic acid. And that's very important. You know, it's just little things like that, that they're like, oh, I thought I was eating so right. And then I was going to get pregnant. I'm like, no, you're specifically on a not fertility diet. <laughs> yeah. That is not helping. You're skinny. I'm glad you're managing your weight, but you are, you're missing a few nutrients. And especially if they're not taking a multivitamin, but I had it speaking of people who were told to not do something. So early in my like, first couple of years I was practicing. And that's how I started testing for MTHFR. This lady came in, she was very young, like in her early twenties. And she had a trimmer. Like it was a, not a big trimmer, but you know, she was really young to have a trimmer. And I was like, well, what are you doing for it? And she goes, well, I'm taking propranolol, which is a beta blocker, a blood pressure medicine. And I was like, that's not a good thing for a 20 year, you know, you're pregnant and I don't want you on this medicine if you don't have to be on the medicine and she's like well yeah and I was like well are you taking b vitamins or are you taking a prenatal and they're like well the doctors told me because of my trimmer to not take any b vitamins I'm like okay they're crazy wow. because who would do that I mean no wow. I was like I was like I think I was like I think that's the opposite of what you should do and that's when I tested her for MTHFR just so I could justify giving her b vitamins and so she indeed had the mutation. I gave her a B vitamin, no more trimmer. She came off the beta blocker. Yeah, Just a, a cheap B vitamin you could get from the store. This was before I was, you know, this was 20, over 20 years ago. Well, it was about 20 years ago. And this was before a methylated folate was everywhere. This is when it was very difficult to source. So, I mean, I just had her take right. folate. I mean, that's all I could get her to do is like, well, just go take more folate. And that, but it worked. You know, she didn't need methylfolate yeah. at the time, but now you can get it left and right. I mean, even Young Living's like Super B, that has methylated folate in it, you know, so they use it in there, you know, now a lot of companies are routinely using a more natural form of folate and not the synthetic folate. But, right, right. but her, her at the time, yeah, she was like, I said, this was early in my career before I really even had a degree in nutrition, but I still read enough to know like, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. Stop taking all B vitamins. I've never heard of any condition where I would ever tell anyone to stop taking all B vitamins. So that person just made something up or there was a misunderstanding, but no. Well, I, 
I really believe it's almost the, the fear of the unknown. Yep. And they're more concerned about the potential side effects that they don't know anything about that could happen. Um, because when you when you're dealing with drugs, medications, prescription, non-prescription, whatever, there's always so many more side effects. And I was telling somebody, you know, we're, we're just talking about it this weekend. And I think, I think she's here to pick up some, some um, oils, but I was telling somebody that the interesting thing is, is that they, Oh, you know, nobody's really ever died of a, of a vitamin overdose. Right? Not really. I think that's the thing. Especially B vitamins. They're water soluble. You're going to pee out. If you, there is no, there's no upper limit. Now, are there any particular supplements that you like for women when they're trying to get pregnant? When they're like for pregnancy? For like um, just fertility or like. Mm-hmm. Well, specifically, you know, I just, I like to make sure, I don't know if you can hear me right now. I can. Mm-hmm. For some reason, my phone is backing, when I'm backing out, my thing goes to the camera and it turns off my speakers. But what I really like is just to make sure people are getting optimal, like a good, uh, you know, so here's the thing. And I was just thinking about this yesterday, talking to somebody else about it, actually. And the challenge is, is most people are so depleted and deficient in nutrients and they don't even know it that just giving them the basics, the minimal amount, the the daily um, requirements, I guess you could say. That's never going to be enough for so many people because right. so many people are so depleted. So is there one specific thing? I mean, no. The one thing I would absolutely say is to do some kind of detox. Yeah. That would be the one thing. You know, oh. testing is always great right. to see what they really are depleted in. So you can really address those things and give them therapeutic doses of nutrients because, I mean, most people are deficient in something. Right. You know, and you know, multiple things. Specifically, what I would say is like, people think detox is like, oh, I'll drink this liquid and poop for two weeks and there's my detox. Sometimes detox is what's in your mascara, what's in your lipstick, what's in your shampoo. I mean, you're putting 200 toxins on your body every day and then asking these organs to make an egg. You know, it might not want to make an egg. That egg might be weighted down by all the gluten and milk and words you can't pronounce in all of your products so i mean sometimes i tell people yes. and actually one somebody got mad at me once because she's like oh my husband bought me this great perfume and i'm like uh while you're trying to get pregnant don't wear that great perfume why don't you just use an essential oil blend that smells good and fragrant if you must put anything on at all she's like but it's so special to me about i was like but the baby will be special stop using the, you know she's like i i don't want to worry about every little thing and i'm like no it's time to worry about every little thing when you're pregnant i don't want you putting it on either <laughs> want you to find something that's safe if you're going to wear a fragrance while you're pregnant it doesn't have to be you know some stuff from the drugstore that's got a lot of chemicals you could wear natural oils at that point too right i was like and your mascara i mean as i think everything you can change that won't you know make you ugly (laughs) you know but it's like you know there's lipstick that's natural you don't have to be lipstick free and mascara free but find things that are very low on the toxic scale because that change helps i mean i could stop all the food i want but if you're putting more chemicals on yourself that weren't in the food i you know have you really helped yourself you've got to take the chemicals out of your food and you have to take the chemicals out of your face and your body and your you know and everywhere everything. everywhere and it, it's well, not hard but it's in it but it's doable but it might actually really lift your fertility to a different level well, I think it, it ultimately lifts everything, but I think when you, you mentioned that she said she was worried about having to worry about everything, you didn't want to have to worry about everything. Right. I think the key too is like shifting people's beliefs about that. It's not worrying about it. It's just, it's just being conscious of it. Yeah. Like being now that you know, point, yeah. Now that you know, yeah. be aware and do something about it. Don't just say, I can't get pregnant and try to wait for the pill. That's going to like snap everything into place when you're doing a list of things that are not be doing you any favors identify that list and start figuring out what you can do right <laughs> you know instead and of it's, the two-week detox isn't going to gonna change everything if you're if you haven't realized i can't eat all this beef i ha- need enzymes in my body my gut is all screwed up my probiotics aren't right i you know put all this yep. stuff on my face i look real pretty and i smell real good i'm like but that 200 chemicals i mean when when i deliver the baby if i drain the cord and sent that off all those chemicals are in the cord. So yep. you're trying to get pregnant. Don't have those chemicals right now. Your body might not be able to get pregnant due to 
that. You know, it could be anything. And I can't even test you to find out if that's the case. But I know that right. if you're doing it and you can find a way to put some, you know, no, don't use Vaseline. Why don't you put coconut oil on your lips or a yeah, coconut okay. oil based lip stain or, you know, don't wear mascara or put some magnetic lashes on instead. Or, you know, there's lots of natural eyeshadow. You don't have to wear, you know, the fancy drugstore stuff that costs a lot but you don't know what the, half the words that are in. i mean i like i said young living has a whole line of non-toxic makeup and get a few items from there and switch out 50 of your 200 chemicals you know do start somewhere because you never know which color so you might be allergic to red yellow and blue and here you are throwing it on every, you know it's in your food and here and there so i'm like there's just a lot of little things that you could do without actually even taking a pill although i am going to tell you to take some pills <laughs> Well, I think people don't realize, like, the skin is the largest organ in the body. Yep. And it absorbs everything. It absorbs everything, you yeah. know. And we are already kind of, unfortunately, especially if you live in large cities, you know, inhaling and around toxins all the time. And it's really, you, you know, you've got to overcome that. So to keep swapping on more stuff on top of that, it just, yeah. And every little thing helps, you know. I, I think. You know, and little changes, start with little changes. Get used to some small things, you know, find some natural shampoos or lo lotion would be probably the most important thing yep. Yep. to start with because it you put it on and it stays on. At least shampoo, it rinses out. But even so, you want to start switching little by little and just get it done. Get it done. Because I think in the long term, for long run, everybody will people feel better in, in, in general. I know. I, yeah. Exactly. So yeah, the toxins are important. Also, doctors who hate to give you any vitamins or anything at all, if they grab onto something, I'm like, oh, we should all be doing it. So fertility doctors have found that if they give people coenzyme Q10, it improves egg quality. They have better in vitro rates when they give people coenzyme Q10. Oh. So I'm like, hey, we're gonna. Do you know? Um, they're using 600, which is a lot. You can't even buy a 600. That's a lot. Right. It's like you go, you go buy it at the over the counter and now you're taking six pills a day. But like, even if the person only took 100 or 200 or 300, I'm like, if you're not taking it, it be taking it. <laughs> I don't get caught up on the dose because if you're younger, you might not need all 600. They're probably working with an older, you know, crowd. And so I'm like, you know, so I, I vary the dose on what I tell people to do, but vitamin D is important for fertility. Coenzyme Q10 is important for fertility. Omega-3 is good for you know, and then yeah. Young Living has Omega Gize, which has all three of those in it. So if somebody were already in Young Living, I'd be like, hey, just buy some Omega Gize and that, that's, you know, might replace some things that are missing, right? <laughs> then the fertility doctors also use DHEA and they found that okay. giving people DHEA improves egg quality also. Now they're giving people 75 milligrams. Some people might, you know, get acne at that dose I yeah. ease people into it I'm like start with 25 then we'll we'll see where we will end up as far as that but you know Young Living has Indogize which has ashwagandha which is huge for fertility in India and it has DHEA mixed together so I might tell them you know hey do Omega Gize and Indogize and that might give you a lot of advantages plus yeah. removing your toxic makeup might be a big you know paradigm shift here you know what I mean that's you're really looking for a paradigm shift in how your body functions yep. yeah that I love yeah I love ashwagandha it's one of my favorite herbs I think yeah yeah just thinking of that it is. It's good. I like ashwagandha and rhodiola, but I mean, all those things that lower stress. So that's the other thing about ashwagandha. It's very, it's adaptogenic. So it, it, mon, it modulates a lot of the hormones in your body. So if you have that on board, anything that's not right, it's going to shift it closer to optimal. So, you know, I, I like that mix of ashwagandha and DHEA because that can, you know, it's very helpful. Yeah, no, that's, it's interesting how many people are low in DHEA. Oh yeah. Especially if you can't get pregnant, you know, that, you know, it could be that stress has taken its toll on you, you know, and if your body's stressed out, it's not like, Hey, let's make a baby. It's usually like, uh, we got enough on our plate and we're not going to do that. You know, and you want your body to get some support, right? You want to heal it. You want it to have some support. You want it to think everything's okay. It's easier to get pregnant, but right. 
Yeah. And omega three during pregnancy pregnancy is good. So yeah, that that omega jize. Yeah, I, I like that product. Oh, that's something too. Um, which I think I'm a big. I, you know, it's it's a little bit controversial, but I definitely I've always worn EMF protection. I kind of wonder how much all this five G is going to potentially affect people's fertility and and as well. So I'm gonna look that up right now. Five G and fertility. Yeah, I. I don't know. I mean, or I, Wi-Fi I, I in definitely. general. Yeah. Wi-Fi in general. Well, 5G is just a stronger version of the old EMF stuff, right? Yeah. So, and they're popping those little towers up all over the place. But I do wonder about that. I don't know. Like you said, it's a little controversial because some people think it's it's a little crazy. But of course, a lot of things I believe, I think a lot of people think are crazy. But results don't care what people think. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know that electromagnetic fields can affect your mitochondria and cause oxidative stress. And some people aren't taking enough like fruits and vegetables to counteract some of that oxidative stress. You know, and even just like ultraviolet light and, you know, the rays from the sun. I mean, there's just a lot of things that can cause stress to the body that aren't, you don't identify as stressful. So, I mean, that's why I like the Ningxia red. It's, you know, the, all that, that, those super fruit juices, oh, yeah. pomegranate oh, yeah. juice, the goji berry juice that's in the Ningxia red, blueberry juice, eating blueberries, eating all those purple fruits, all those things help you mop up Diff, you know all your free radicals and so if you're exposing yourself on the phone all day and stressed out and exposing yourself to wi-fi you live under power lines but you're not doing a list of things that's counteracting okay. that you're not at an advantage in general right oh absolutely yeah they do they, they do stuff on rats like you, it's hard to do stuff on people and wi-fi but they've definitely done stuff on rats and wi-fi and this was back in 2013 before it was 4g and 5g video somebody posted and they were they have one of those emf monitors and you know these things go crazy around microwaves and they go crazy around cell phones and right now oh for sure that whole thing is a big there, old can you imagine mm -hmm. oh, thousands of screens and cell phones and electronics but it would be interesting to see i don't know if they've done any kind of research on that I mean, I've seen research and I haven't found anything that was like half the rat embryos. I mean, they're sort of like, we should do more studies. They keep studying it, but I haven't seen like the smoking gun yet. Right. Well, the but still, is, but it's still, like I said, it's still, we know it produces oxidative stress and we know that, you know, fruits and vegetables, you know, help you, you know, you're supposed to eat four to five servings, six, seven. I don't even know yeah. anymore. Every time I see the number, it's a different number. But if people know that they don't get more than three servings of fruits and vegetables a day, but, and they're right. trying to get pregnant, I'm like, you know, either eat them or find some sort of Somebody supplement did. that's going to provide you that extra two or three servings. Like I've, I use super greens, multi greens, anything green in a shake. I'll add, like I said, I put Ningxia red in everything. Do you really? I do. I mean, cause you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's sweet enough it's and it's juicy and, and it, it, it's good to go in a, like if I'm making a smoothie and I don't put sugar in my smoothie, I'll add Ningxia red because that'll sweeten it. It doesn't alter the flavor much. No, I mean, cause it just adds more juice and fruit and yeah. cause blueberries aren't very sweet. Yeah. Raspberries aren't very sweet. I don't want to put a banana in my smoothie. I don't want to put, you know, I don't yeah. want a lot of sugar and Ningxia red. Sugar. Yeah. And Ningxia red, I should be doing an ounce a day every day because that actually gives you the nutrients of like a hundred carrots. <laughs> You know, I mean, like one ounce yeah. of Ningxia red. Have you ever read that little meat? Did I ever send you that meme? No, I didn't realize One that. ounce of Ningxia red. It does. It has this whole little thing that tells you like, I don't know if it's one ounce or two ounces, but I'm going to find it because it's, oh yeah, here we go. Here it is. I found it. No, that's an advertisement. But it, it gives you the equivalence of like, oh yeah, here it is. One ounce has the antioxidant powder uh, power of four ounces, four, four pounds of carrots, two quarts of carrot juice, eight oranges, one pint of orange juice, two pounds of beets, two cups of beet juice, three cups of raspberries, or two cups of blueberries. That's one ounce. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Not, not all of those things, but each one of those yeah. things, like it replaces one of those things, and you would never eat 
two cups of blue but not never but you know that would not be right. common and so or if you did two ounces which is i mean i do one ounce a day sometimes i do two i might do six one day it, it all depends on what i'm doing but yeah. one serving gives you a four pomegranates two plums can you send me that because i've yeah. seen that yeah i mean i knew it's i know it's concentrated but to have that visual is pretty yep it's pretty powerful especially when you know to eat that much is virtually impossible you Correct. Know, to really get all the nutrients you need from food it's and i you know i kind of wonder how in the world i mean i know our food's so processed now but how in the world did we get enough nutrients years ago before we had all these supplements because the dirt um, was better you, you actually yeah. your beet I, actually had stuff in it now our beets might not even have anything so you definitely right. want something that you know has stuff very true very true yeah, I just texted it to you. Oh, it just blows my mind. No, I was going to say, you can even add a drop of like frankincense to your Ningxia Red and get all of the power out of that or clove. Clove is the most powerful. Like if one drop of oil does something, clove is the one that does, like will kill millions of free radicals. It has the most free yeah. radical, you know, mean, you know, so I'm just saying you, you want to get rid of free radicals. We all do. So what do you add cloves to? Do you, is it, how strong is that oil? Clove is really strong. Nature Red actually really oh. handles a lot of the oils well. You can literally, literally add any essential drop of essential oil to Ningxia Red, okay. any blend or thieves to it. And it, the Ningxia Red, the, all that fruitiness kind of like makes it not terrible. <laughs> okay. Okay. It, it makes it unterrible. Unterrible. Get yes, it <laughs> improves it. Oh, no, you don't, but you, you don't drink Ninxia Red every day. You don't drink Ninxia Red. No, I don't. You know, I've got like three things I have. <laughs> I've got a couple of other products and I mix it up. I have, um, I have a chlorophyll, like a peppermint chlorophyll that I like to use. Oh, that's just good. I like the flavor. Yeah. And then I have another one that's like a concentrated type of, it's kind of like Ninja Red, but it's, it's, um, it's a different company, different product, but it's similar concept, I guess. And let's see, I've got, those are probably the three that I use most. And then of course I've been using that collagen lately. I've been really consistent with that. So, okay, so let's see. Oh, there we go. Very cool. And then you just sent that. So say it, nin it's not Ninja, nin Ningxia. Yeah. Ningxia. 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 Ningxia Red. Ningxia. Yeah, no, I like it. I make everybody else in the house drink it. They all like, we, we finally found something that we all like because I've been doing super fruit juices for years. I mean, back when yep. Zango was a thing and there, there's been all sorts of different super fruit juices. Yep. Mona V, I've had them all. I literally once upon a time I've ordered a bottle of everything and had, and made when people came over, it was like a Tygo. I made everybody taste like, tell me which one you like. And we were just drinking all of them. They were like, yeah, this was fine. This was fine. This was fine. I prefer the Ningxia yeah. Red, but, but I've had some before that I didn't like it. Like Noni juice, when that was a big thing, I hated Noni juice. It didn't just take like mango steam by itself. I didn't like some of them put like some weird coloring or something in it where I just didn't like it. Ningxia Red, it doesn't bother. I like it. And I, yeah. Yeah. And it goes well. Like no, I, said, I can take it. I can just drink it, you know, straight. I just kind of use it almost like a little shot glass or whatever. I don't usually mix it with anything when I do take it, but um but I haven't been on the habit of using that one as much lately. I need to do that because I do have a couple of bottles sitting there. I just feel like I have so many bottles of so many things sitting everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, so do I. I have a yeah, I have a room full of stuff that I'm never gonna figure out again. I've got my own little medicine cabinet. Every you know, I have nutrition. It's not really medicine. It's my own little nutrition cabinet with a ton of stuff. So 